Hey guys, back up here at the treehouse today. Gonna go talk with the guys that do the low voltage lighting about landscape lighting, lighting around the house and other, uh, and lighting down at the entertainment recreation deck. And so that's kind of the main purpose of today is to kind of talk to them, talk about ideas how to really make this house pop with lighting uh, at night and uh, really make it feel really cool and an awesome place to stay. So um, hope you enjoy this video. Don't forget to click the bell to get notified whenever I post another one. Hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up like button. All that's great. And uh, please share, uh, really appreciate it. Okay, um, now uh, let's go see what's going on. All right. trucks here that's always good let's take a look at how they're coming along on this side kind of a little it's the sketchiest side i think of the house and then once they get this side done then coming around they've got the deck on that side so that side should be pretty fast because i mean just setting up this uh pump jack um takes a long time and moving it around. Um. Hi, Gary. Hey, Peter, how you doing? Pretty good, how's it going? Hi, hey, Peter. I'm Peter. Jeremy, how's Jeremy. Nice to meet you. Doing a little filming for YouTube, so. If you want to start at one end and work our way through, that usually works best. Can sure. You tell me what you're interested or thinking about and I can give you some ideas or. Okay. Things. The only thing that I was thinking out here was some little uplighting on some trees over here. Okay. That's probably landscape lighting, mm -hmm. which is not you. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, so what I do is more of the um, uh, infrastructure, so wire now for wireless access points, internet, audio, video. Okay. Motorized shades. I don't think that we're going to put shades here. Okay. Um, I think people are just going to have them open all the time and I think it'd be kind of a waste um, because of the view and everything. Um, if, here, you look. Want, if you want to do lighting control or um, you know, motorized shades, we use Lutron for that type of product. Yep. You know, so with Lutron, you can do a split shade where you split Here, let's go into the, the other room and so we can I can hear you a little bit better. Maybe we just have them in the bedrooms. You know, maybe we have them in the bedrooms. Yeah, and it makes sense. So the options are at this point is we can hardwire with low voltage wiring. Okay. The benefit of that is that you're not having to get up there to change 16 D cell batteries. If we had the ability to get the infrastructure in place now, it's yep. certainly the time to do it. Okay. Uh, maybe you just do the uppers and not the lowers or... I assume roller shades, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, and how would you do it? Would you do a split unit like... Yeah, I'd probably do the length of the window. They, we would have a hard time getting a fabric to span this entire difference without having to uh, railroad it. Yeah. So what I would say is that if you went half and half, um, you wouldn't have to do every individual door panel. You know, so you can save money there um, doing that. And we just do a... Uh, and just do a, a blackout shade. Exactly. Just the fabric can be, ter be determined at any point in the future. Yep. Um, but if we get the wiring to place now, then... Batteries. Yep. So I would do for a shade this size, it's going to be a five inch pocket. Okay. So that's the only thing you have to consider. The top one's no, no problem because we would just tuck them up tight to the beams and it would just be a pocket. Yeah. Um, that would sit against the beams and then drop down. Okay. The and then for the lower one, just keep in mind that you would have a five inch pocket that's going to extend off the wall that's going to become a dust ledge. Well, the shade would actually drop down at this at this plane here. Okay. And come down. And the reason I'm saying that is you can't really do a um, inside mount because you only have right. two and a half inches. So then you have two and a half inches of pocket extending yeah. across the window. Yeah. And that's fine. I mean, it, it really, I think the only use of it would be if somebody wanted to have a complete blackout room to sleep in. Exactly. Let's let's price it out with uh, just a roller shade. I think that's fine. 
And then the pocket, what does that look like? Does that, does that get painted? Uh, there's a couple different options. You can do a fabric wrapped. Um, so the fabric matches what the shade fabric is. Yeah. Or you can do architectural, which is just a uh, square box that can be painted or ordered in custom colors. I guess with these windows. So in there we have the ability to do an inside mount. So would you be able to do even, I mean, is these two? The only thing if we're looking at doing a, uh, you know, window like this because you have the framing come out this far. Yeah. If we were to mount it to the inside, we would just do a reverse roll so that it came down. Yeah, that makes that sense. Okay. Roller. And then we probably want to do that on, on these windows too. Yeah. And then um, I would price these other three windows out as, as separately only because we may do have to do something else because I, I don't know how much these cost at all no clue and so for a small window like that if that's going to be like a thousand dollars for each thing it's it could be you know sure. i don't know yeah and and what do you, what would you guess for here uh, so you're probably looking at 1700 just because we just did an estimate for the windows not too much different than the size so you're probably looking at 1700 to 1800 each side each side and then the top ones would probably be about well I'm th thinking about the roller coming all the way down. Uh, I'd have to take the measurement and see if we can. Uh, so just doing one all the way to the top that comes Correct. Out there. I'd have to see if the tube um, in the motor can support that much weight based on the fabric. So. But if it's if it's in that ballpark, I think that'd be okay. And then the other bedroom is the exact is the exact of this, except the the windows are not as tall um, up there. So, and then these, these small ones, I mean, it'd be nice to have one switch by the bed that you flip it and then all the windows go dark, but I would put this on a separate because it may or may not be worthwhile. We might just have like some type of blinds or something that they can pull down. And here's what we're doing over here. Um, we're basically thinking no TVs except for here. So this is a Samsung uh, frame that's gonna go right there. They're putting an outlet over there, and then we'll have to run the conduit down for the the one cord or whatever they call it to the box, the control box. I think that corner is going to hold that. And then we're going to have um, Sonos Arc here. Uh, there's going to be a mantle there that the Sonos Arc will sit on, and then that's the plug for that. And uh, then we're going to have subwoofer sona subwoofer over there and then the play ones back here behind the couch yeah so we are direct with sonos as well and samsung so i don't know okay. if purchase the i purchased the the frame tv already i didn't purchase the other stuff okay okay so our our time frame for opening this house is by the you know mid-october okay yeah and then what i was thinking in the bedrooms we would just do the sonos rooms um, it's a pretty good battery life and you can Bluetooth to it. Yep. Um, as far as Wi Fi goes, you want to give you Wi Fi extenders through the. I would say yes. Um, especially because when we go talk about the area downstairs, the recreation area, they, we need to have Wi Fi down there for sure. I've tried a couple systems, and I know that, and you probably know better than me. Yeah. Um, the Eero system does not work well with Sonos. It didn't work well at all with my house. I had to t t take it back and get a um, uh, Netgear. Really? It worked fine in our house in Montana because we just have the Sonos Roams um, with the Eero. But I have a pretty good sized Sonos system there, and it, it was horrible. It would like it wouldn't pick it up. Um, I would add back speakers, and then the next day they wouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. And we, I went through support like crazy, and um, so I'm not a big fan. I mean, if you can get it to work and we don't have any troubles, then uh, fine. But I, I'm just telling you my experience. This room over here is bathroom. Just bathroom, and uh, one of the challenges we have is just not a whole lot of closet space to be putting things into. So That's for did, sure. Where did you kind of envision your router, the modem and router being? Over here. Stand. It'll be something. A piece of furniture of some kind. Uh, and they're, they're supposed to be getting uh, fiber optics up here. 
That's what I heard. I don't know if you heard the same thing, but that's what the... Uh, for Netty or for... Uh, no, Centrelink. for the phone company? CenturyLink? Yeah, CenturyLink. They, they've been actually working on it. I live on Richmond Hill, um, which is uh, where you came from where we live. But, Down in Denver. Yeah, so it's... Um, yeah. That. Yeah, and I have a client over in Evergreen that we just put Netty system in and it works. It works great. Yeah, I'm you know, not... 25 megs, it's pretty consistent. Yep. And, uh, we haven't had any issues and we're running it. Okay. A very sophisticated, complete home automation system off of it. Okay. We're doing lighting shades, audio, video, everything. Okay. Thinking about this, I think I do want two rooms on either side of the bed stands so yeah. that we can kind of have a, a left right system in each of the bedrooms as well as the surround here. Yeah. And then we would do the same type of shades set up um, in this side, but this side, like I said, has a. Um, the, the windows up here are a lot are, are lower, smaller, so they're, they're not as they're not as tall. Uh, and then you've only got you've got this window, um, which that, that could be shaded, and then this could be just a, something else. But let's get an estimate for the whole thing and go from there. <laughs> Let's go down, try to do this as gracefully as possible. Um, so basically to kind of, if you can imagine, this will have wood slats coming down with this door opening. This will be a, a six foot barrel sauna, a kitchen island with a fridge and a grill. Um, and then the electricians are doing some down lighting and some up lighting. A hot tub over there, um, and then a bar over there. I'm not sure what, if anything, we need here. I think the electricians might have gotten all the lighting, but I wanted you to see the air in case there's something here that you thought we needed to do. Just make sure that we have Wi-Fi extended over to this area. Yeah, I mean, the only other thing that I guess we could do is uh, wired speakers, you know? We could certainly do uh, a um, marine grade speaker that recess into the ceiling and connect to a Sonos amp back in that piece of furniture in the great room. So instead of penetrating into that, we could very easily just do a service speaker in the corner. Yeah, like a couple of Definitive Technology. That's what I have at home, a couple of Definitive Technology ones. They're older, but um, just a couple of surface mounts that... Same concept, we use monitor audio. Yeah, is... that's fine. I think we had two up in the corners projecting back this way. We covered this way. Two this way and that way? Yeah. I mean, this way? Okay. Yeah, just the one in each corner and then have it project back um, into this area. I think it would be, okay. it would be really nice. Yeah. Because this is going to be, this is the fire pit area. This is where people are going to be hanging out right here. The only home automation that we'd be doing is if you wanted to have one button that controls all the shades to go down at the same time. You know, it's just a Neutron processor so that yeah. all the shades can talk to each other by pressing one button. Probably not. Just probably a, a switch on the wall by the bedroom. If we sp even split it half and half, each of those shades is going to have its own motor yep. and its own control. Yep. So it would have its one switch to drop one, one switch to drop the other, or we program it so both of them drop at the same time with just one switch. That's we'd, what we'd need to do. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Perfect. Hi guys, we're gonna make a little bit different video for you today about the treehouse. This is something that's going into the treehouse. It is the TV, it's a Samsung frame, 65 inch, a beautiful TV for a beautiful mountain home. It's a bezel frame. Uh, that looks beautiful and like a piece of art. So it, it has also a lot of artwork, digital artwork that you can display. So let's get this unboxed. Here we go. All right. So this is the brains behind the system. The One Connect. This is what uh, powers the TV and also sends the signal from whatever media source. USB 2, optical, LAN, not gonna use that. Uh, HDMI 1 and 2 and 3, which is the ARC. 
We'll be using that for the sound bar. HDMI 4, and here's the One Connect. This is the no gap wall mount. We'll get into that in a minute. But I want to show you the back of the TV. Okay. So this is the back of the TV. This is where the wall mount sits. And um, let's take a look and see what this wall mount looks like. Here. Okay, these are yeah, these are the hollow wall anchors in case it's needed. And this piece bolts onto the back of the TV. This goes on the wall. And this somehow attaches something like that. This connects here and then this cord just goes I'm gonna undo it since I have to measure it anyway this cord goes right in here and then they've got different options so this is completely flat with the bracket it's completely flat you can run this cable along here like that which I think is probably the preferred method, and then have it enter a junction box here, and then go through the wall and eventually hook up to the box. I think I'm gonna to try to fire it up, so let me get it back turned around, let me get it all connected, and uh, see you in a second. Okay, for this one, I'm gonna um, hold the camera and, and show you a little bit. This is the uh, remote. I just put the batteries in. Pretty sleek looking. And then that is the box. I've got so the power. Power goes here. This is connected to the TV. <coughs> and <coughs> I've got the TV set over there. The cable for the TV is 15 feet. I measured that. And uh, yeah, let's see if we can turn this. On. So good to know. So let's uh, let's see what happens here when I hit the power button. Huh, it comes to life. So I'm actually going to put this like this so you guys can see it in the right way. Hello and welcome. Please download the SmartThings app on your mobile to start TV setup. So there we go, and I do have that on my smartphone. You may press the right button but to set up the TV with the TV remote. Uh, let's see. The accessibility function is available when you press and hold the volume button. Let's see, I just press the, the right button, which is this button right here. All right, next. Uh, connect any de devices, yes. Don't want to connect any devices yet. Wireless connection. that in. Be back in a second after I connect to Wi-Fi. Alright, let's see if I made a good connection here. And I did. Or not. Next. Okay, tap you. Enter your smart screen on the frame by simply tapping. Try tapping after the frame is set up is complete. It is only available on Samsung on the smartphone with Android 8.1. I have an iPhone, so that's not going to work for me. But if you have a Samsung, maybe you can try that. Okay, test your remote. So, let's see. Um, pressing push up or down, adjust volume. Switch to art mode. Try it. Press the power button to view artworks in full screen mode. Press and hold the power button for two seconds to 
turn off your TV. So, let's see. Alright. It's a sample. I want to see what the real thing. Okay, connect to a network, read the terms, okay, but we're all ready to use. Well, guys, I couldn't um, get through the terms and conditions using the remote. Um, so, and there it is again. But uh, I was able to click the power button once, and then it takes it into, well, it's supposed to take it into the art. So it might just, yeah. So that gives you an idea on what that looks like. but. Um, then I tried to set it up with my app and um, the Samsung Connect app and uh, I got an error message and it said to call Samsung support. Uh, we'll get it figured out. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video uh, through all my trials and tribulations on trying to get this set up. But, uh, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. We'll get it done. Uh, thanks for watching. Hit subscribe and be sure to subscribe to the Zen Treehouse channel so you can see all the great builds. And we're working towards getting this thing completely wrapped up in the next few months. There's going to be a lot of great videos coming out. And you you got to see the finished product. It's going to be epic. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Take care, guys. Have a nice day.